What I'm kind of going to talk through today is around intelligent solutions with a focus on industry, around the vision versus current reality, and really looking at how should we get from the current reality to that vision with a focus on high-level decision-making. And an example I'll talk to is in the scheduling domain. So if we look at factories of the future, there's a vision out there of totally automated factory, robots doing everything, even maintenance on each other. <clears throat> and we are progressing towards that vision. Um, you know, factory data systems are getting better, factory automation is getting better. But the current situation is we're in a transition phase. We're beginning to transform from human-centered activities towards a more automated approach. But how long will this transition phase last? So if we look at how artificial, artificial intelligence is progressing, if we go back to 1980s, Deep Blue created by IBM, beat the world uh, champion Gary Kasparov in chess. Now at this moment in time, I certainly remember it, people thought artificial intelligence was going to take over the world in a very short time, and that hasn't quite happened. If you look earlier this year, AlphaGo, created by Google DeepMind, won a Go match against the world champion. Now, Go is a game played with black and white stones, for those who aren't familiar with it, and you're kind of trying to control a section of the board. Now, it's a much more complicated game than chess. It requires judgment and strategy, and there's a lot more potential moves than there is in chess. And from an artificial intelligence point of view, this wasn't expected just yet. This was probably expected a couple of years out. So <clears throat> from an AI point of view, this was very good progress. However, let me put on another hat and say, if I was an industry leader, if I'm a factory manager, I could look at this progress and say, 1987, you won a game of chess. 30 years later, you won a more complicated game. It doesn't really tick a box for me. So when you look at artificial intelligence solutions today, would a manager of a complex factory give complete control to algorithms? I think we'd all be agreed that the answer to that is no. And even people who don't agree on anything else would probably say the answer to that is no. So the question that is, algorithms capable of running a complex factory, like when do we think that might happen? Or more importantly, how do we think that might happen? So AI at the moment is successful, but it's in bounded situations. And what I'm really talking about today is how we can begin to use AI for higher level decisions, decisions where you require judgment, you require strategy, allowing for the fact that AI solutions today do not understand a lot of context. And I think what we need to recognize also is that it's not going to be one giant step. And we're not going to wake up someday and we suddenly have an algorithm that's this good that can control all our factory. So we need to look at what are the steps we could do today. How do we start this journey? And remembering that the goal is not perfection. The goal is that we are better than we were yesterday. So one potential improvement, and I think this was referred to this morning, is to treat human operators and automated systems not autonomously, but as team members in what's known as a joint cognitive system. So what you're trying to do here is move from a situation where you have a human who's utilizing technology, but not really collaborating with technology, to a situation where you pretty much have technology having a conversation with the human. And a really good example of that is how sat-nav systems are. And we probably don't even think of how sat-nav systems work. But if you're anything like me, you probably use the sat-nav to get here today. Um, you took it out of your pocket, you put in where you're going, it gave you a number of options. Um, it, there was a default option, which you probably chose, and just said, yeah, I'm grand with that, and, and you selected. But you were in control of what you did. Um, after that, if there was a crash or anything, like there was on the M4 this morning, if anyone was using it, it gave you an alternative. It said, maybe you should go this way instead. So it started suggesting it's continuously working in the background and suggesting updates to, for you. At any point, again, you're still in control. You can choose a different path. You could decide to go a different way. You could make a mistake and go a different way. But it just keeps telling you from where you are now, here's, here's the best thing you can do. And the culture around that is really interesting and actually quite important and something we need to get into industry. So the culture around sat-nav systems is very much about the human being in control. If you remember when sat-nav systems came in first, there were stories in the newspaper how people drove off a cliff following a sat-nav system. And no one went, well, I'm never using sat-nav systems again. That clearly doesn't work. The culture was, well, what an idiot. Who'd follow a sat-nav system all the way off a cliff? That's just crazy. So that culture of saying, well, actually, you use an artificial intelligence algorithm. It suggests a solution to you. But you actually do apply a bit of human cop on at the end of that to make sure you have the right decision. So decision making. Is it perfect? Can we expect perfect? Of course not. 
Um, and this is something about expectations, especially in industrial solutions. There's a feeling sometimes that just because a solution is automated, it is perfect, which is not true. So this is around decision support, about augmenting the human, not replacing the human, about helping them make the right decision. In saying that, there's a few buts here. 